Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. So today, guys, we'll do my Europa League quarterfinal predictions for the year 2024. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, and yeah, so we're going to go ahead and start. We're going to start with the first game we got here. It is Milan versus Roma. This is a big one, an Italian matchup, guys. Both these teams have played against each other. And it's also interesting because neither of these teams have ever won the Europa League before in the history. So this is a huge opportunity for both teams. Milan this season... They have been great this season domestically, but they haven't really been great in Europe. And I think this is where they can finally turn their fortunes around and try to, you know, get a huge, uh, to make a massive statement here. Because let's be real, they've already secured Champions League League. They're going to finish second place most likely. And now it's a matter of, can they try to secure the Europa League title? A trophy, you know, under Ste Stefan Pioli. Obviously, the players look out for Milan, obviously, Pulisic, Reinders, you know, Giroud, Musa. Tamori, I could go on and on. The amount of talent they have in this team is unbelievable. Roma, on the other hand, have been struggling. They haven't been great this season. They had a rough, rough start to the season. They are now picked them, picked things up, and now are currently fit at the time of recording this video. So my thing for Roma is that Lukaku and Dybala, they're such a great partnership. And I think for Roma, for them to advance for this one, I think the two of them have to click together. I think Lukaku and Dybala have to be on their A game. And I think the interesting thing was Denner De Rossi is now Roma's playing a more free, uh, proactive approach. They're playing a much better attacking, expansive fan of, brand of football. Because Mil we haven't seen, I don't think Milan have played against Roma with the new coach, I believe. So this is going to be a very, very interesting one. How is this going to pan out, tactically speaking, and everything? For me, I think Milan. I just think Milan, for me, just have way too much class. Roma, for me, is a good team. I really like this Roma team. But I just think that for me, Milan, I have just, I just, I think they're they're putting so. I think Milan's going all in for the Europa League. Roma, for me, I just don't think they have the same. Uh, I don't think they have the same desire as Milan for this Europa League, and I think Roma's gonna be more balanced approach, whereas Milan is putting everything for the Europa League basket. So for that reason, I think Milan's gonna win this. But let me just say this right now, though: the second leg is of Rome, and that could be huge for Roma. So. I think for Roma to advance, they cannot lose the first leg. If they could get a draw, get a win the first leg, second leg, take care of business. So, but yeah, for Milan, man, they have to win the first leg. Simple as that. Next up, it is uh, the winner of this will play against the winner of this one. We got here is Bayer Leverkusen versus West Ham. What a matchup this is. This is a very interesting one. For me, this is the matchup I'm most looking forward to in the Europa League. Because of how fascinating both teams are attacking-wise. The amount of quality in both teams attacking depth. And for Leverkusen, man, this season's been unbelievable. They're thir currently 13 points at the top of the table, unbeaten in the Bundesliga. And this is a great, great time for them to show that they could do it. Can they win the treble? The mini treble, should I say. You know, and the players I got for for this team are obviously, you know, Florian Wards, Grimaldo, Frimpong, uh, Jonathan Ta, Hinsape, uh, Xhaka. Schick, they're like, there's so many players as a Leverkusen team to look out for. That being said, West Ham have been amazing. West Ham have been fantastic this season. Alvarez has been amazing. Suchek's been amazing. Paqueta, Mikel Antonio has been amazing. And you have to give credit to this West Ham team is that they have really done well this season, especially with the big departure of Declan Rice. They've done so well. They defeated both Manchester United and Arsenal this season in the Premier League, which is insane. Insane. And they also defeated Spurs as well. So, and Chelsea as well. They defeated four of the top six clubs this season in the Premier League. That is absolutely unbelievable. All credits of Leverkusen. Leverkusen have done amazing this season. I don't think Leverkusen have been as challenged as West Ham have been. I think West Ham had more of a difficult route to get here. And I think West Ham have, have endured more. And I just think that for me, for West Ham, they have shown a lot more potential. And I think the second leg being at London is huge. Now, don't get me wrong. Leverkusen have done amazing. You know, going up in the Bundesliga is not an easy thing. Most of it, but, but no team has, re like, Leverkusen haven't been able to, we haven't seen them react to a loss. And I think for West Ham, West Ham can really do it. I think Lever I think that West Ham is going to be Leverkusen's one of the most difficult games. I think West Ham is going to pose a different challenge. We haven't seen Leverkusen play against the English team yet. And West Ham have already played against the German team, Freiburg. Now, I know Leverkusen is much better than Freiburg. I know it's not really good in comparison. But the truth is, Leverkusen haven't really been as challenged as West Ham have been. So that's the reason why I think West Ham is going to do this. I just think that for me, West Ham... It's going to be very interesting, very close. I think this could go to extra time, and I just think West Ham is going to take it over the line. But let me just say this right now, though. This is one where Leverkusen can definitely do it. I wouldn't be surprised. I just think West Ham, for me, is going to really show up. 
So, yeah, I think West Ham's going to do it. Next up is Liverpool versus Adelanza. Liverpool, man, this season has been fantastic. Jurgen Klopp say he's going to announce at the end of the season, and Liverpool is going to try to win every trophy that's possible. And, you know, they could win the mini treble as well, just like Leverkusen. And for Liverpool, in my opinion, the players so got for this team is obviously Salah, you know, Luis Diaz, Dor Nunes, Endo, Kwanzaa, Van Dijk, um, Connor Bradley. You know, there's amount of there's so much talent in this Liverpool team and so much depth as well. Adelanta, on the other hand, they've been amazing this season. I think Gasper is doing a great job. Adelanta is now back into where they um, belong to be, you know, back in the, you know, you know, top five in Serie A. And now they're slowly starting to get their ways back to the Champions League football. Now they're starting to adopt a new brand of football, more of a pragmatic approach, more of a counterattacking approach, and more systematic and more disciplined, more defensive. You know, and I think there's so many good players to look up for this team. You know, obviously you got, um, you know, the um, the young center back they have. He's pretty good. Obviously you also have Coop Miners. That's amazing. Then obviously you got uh, Lukman as well. And I just think for a Liverpool, man, they just have too much class. I think Liverpool, for me, they just have way too much firepower. They're way too good as a team. I think Liverpool should be able to do this. And for Adelanta, the only way I can see them getting getting past Liverpool is if they somehow escape Anfield with a draw and beat Liverpool at home. Because the second leg is at home, which I think is interesting. But yeah, for Liverpool, as long as they win the first leg, they should be able to make it to the semifinals of the Europa League. And then the final match that we got here. It is Benfica against Marseille. Benfica, man, this season have been have been very, very turbulent. They haven't been great this season. They've been very much underwhelming. And there's a lot of high expectations for Benfica. You know, and I think one of the big things Benfica haven't been able to figure out this season is who's that striker. They have been a hard time scoring goals. And that's a huge issue for me. Because you look at this like, Marseille team, they have one cold blooded striker. His name is Pierrick Emmerich Aubameyang. He is the all-time leading goal scorer for Marseille. Uh, all-time leading goal scorer. The amount of goals he's got in this competition is unbelievable. And Marseille, for me, are defensively very shambles. Very, very much shambles. And for Benfica, as I said, they just have a hard time scoring goals. And so this is going to be an interesting one. Like, which one is going to prevail? The team that can't score goals or the team that can't defend? <laughs> you know, that's how I like to describe both these teams. Because both these teams have been underperforming to their, for their high standards they've set for their clubs. And I just think for me, Marseille just got it. I just think for more for me, Marseille have it. Benfica for me, they just don't have anyone at the level of Obama. Maybe Di Maria is probably the closest, but even Di Maria for me just isn't that clinical. He isn't the guy that's going to score your goal, and he's not going to be able to score a goal like three, two or three goals in every game. He might score your goal every now and then, but he's just I just don't think he's that clinical of a player, you know. But remember, guys. And these knockout games, it's all about one big moment. And maybe Di Maria might produce one clutch moment. Because we know he is Mr. Clutch after all. He scored in the World Cup final, Copa America final, for what I know. But yeah, I think for me, Marseille, I think they're going to do this. I think they're going to prevail after extra time. And I think they're going to make it to the semifinals. So those are my Europa League semifinal, uh, I mean, sort of quarterfinal predictions, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Let me know your quarterfinal predictions in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.